So hello and welcome to this video on using class modules with collections. So what you probably need to understand first is why do we need to use class modules with collections? Well, when we're reading from data, like the data you can see in the left, we saw this already in an earlier video that we can only store one item in a collection. So if we want to read through these rows and we want to store all the data, for example, the first name, the surname, the country and the total items, the way we do it is by placing the data in a class module and then adding that class module to our collection. So let's take the basic code we've seen before for reading basic data. So we create a, a collection, so call as new collection, and then we get the range. So we create a range variable to give us the range, and we do set range equals, and this equals sheet one, which is our current sheet, and we, we say range A1, because the data starts in A1, and we say current region to give us the adjacent data. Now we looked at current region in a previous video, so if you want to find out about that, go and check on the video on reading between collections and worksheets. So now that we've got the range, it's a simple matter to read through the range. We declare our variable i as long, and that will track the row as we read through it, and we say for i equals 2, to range.rows.count. The reason we start that row 2 is because we don't want to read the header. And now the next thing we want to do is we want to check for the country. So in this case, we're going to say if the country is Australia. So if range.cells, and it's always i in this type of loop, because i is the current row, and we're saying column3.value. So if this value equals Australia, then we want to do something. And what we want to do is we want to store the first name. Now we'd like to do more, but in this case we can only store one value. So we do collection, add, and you can see that it will add the first name. So let's press a breakpoint here. We'll bring up the watch window so we can have a look at what's happening. Let's run the code then. Now we'll have a look in the collection and you can see that it has the names like Joseph, Blossom and so on. So we'll just do a basic check of the data. So if we look at the first incident of Australia, you can see that the first name is Joseph. Now if we look at the next one, you can see that it's Blossom and so on, you can see that it's Claire. So we know that the data that we're reading is correct. But what we want to do is we want to store all the values. And that's pretty common in a normal application. So what we want to do is we want to create a class module to store them. So let's create a class module. The first thing we need is to see the project window. And we select Project Explorer, View Project Explorer, or Control R. And we can see it right here. Now, we've only got one workbook open, but the workbook that we're using with the data, that's the one we want to create the class module in. We just right click anywhere here and select insert and select class module and this creates a new class module now we can view the properties here by doing view properties window or f4 and this allows us to change the name so we're just going to call this one class customer and once we have the, the class customer like this we're just going to put in some very simple values. So if you haven't used classes before, this is like a nice introduction. We're just going to have variables, and we're going to call the variables. Now I'm going to hide these windows again because we don't need them. So we're going to say public first name as string public surname as string and again public the country as string. And public just means that they'll be available outside of the class. If we make something private, then it can be only accessed in the class. But we're going for a very simple class in this case. And total items is a long integer. So how we use these, how we use like something like this, like a class module object, let's have a look at a simple way that we would use it. Use customers. So what we do is we can just say dim o as cls customer. And then in our code, 
we've, we've just declared our variable here. In our code, when we want to use it, we just say set O equals new. Now this creates a new object each time. So O, and we can say first name equals John. And we can set all the variables like this. We can say last name, for example, surname equals Smith. Now the key point in the code is every time we run this line set o equals new customer it creates a new object and this new object is a new set of first name surname and variables so let's just see an example of this i'm going to make this uh, i'm going to say jenny and jones so we'll again we'll run through the code and we look exactly at what's happening here so Let's step through the code using F8 one line at a time. So we've got O, so what is O? Let's copy O into the watch window and let's look at it. And you can see that we have the values here and you can see that there isn't anything in any of them. So it's empty strings, etc. Now we step over the first line, first name equals John, and now you can see that first name has been added and surname is Smith. You can see that that's been added. Now when we create a new customer, we set O equals new customer, this will basically mean O O is now looking at a different piece of memory. This has been created somewhere else. And when we add Jenny, now you might wonder what happens to the original. Well, when we stop having a variable that points at a, a class module, then VBA deletes it. So in our case, when we normally create new objects like this, we normally put them somewhere. So it could be an array, it could be a collection, or it could be a dictionary. So let's see how we're going to use it to solve the problem that we have. So we want to store all the values. So what we can do is we basically have a variable like this O as CLS customer and let's let's actually just call this customer customer as customer and then we can say set the customer equals a new CLS customer. So every time that it finds Australia, we create a new customer object, and then we want to fill this customer object. And then when we're finished filling the customer object, we're going to add the object there. So what we do is we basically say the customer dot first name equals range dot one value and so on and let's copy this down so we just copy this a few times and then let's just tab it in and we say surname we say country and total items and these are one two three four so you see if you write code like this under it it's it's very very clear what's happening and very easy to follow the code also easy to save this mistake so let's put a bit of a, a space between them so it's just a bit clear we create a new object we add item suit and then we add it to the collection now the easiest way as i always like to do is to step through the code here so let's put a breakpoint here so it goes here when it finds our first one we run the code and customer equals new customer. Let's look in our watch window. We'll, we'll drop the customer in there. Delete the others. So we've got customer in there, and you can see customer doesn't equal anything. Now, first name is Joseph, surname is Velasquez, country is Australia, and the total items is 40. And we've added that to our collection. So if you look in the collection, you can see that item one is the same. So this is where it gets interesting. When we go there the next time, so I'm gonna run it on the code until, and it'll stop at our breakpoint here. So we've run on the code, it's stopped there. So again, if you wanna create a breakpoint to pause the code, just click in the side here and it just creates one. And the code will stop when it gets to that point. So it's handy here because we don't want to have to keep going through the code until we actually reach a country or a customer whose country is um, Australia.
So we create the second one and you can see now that customer is empty. But the item that's in collection is still stays the same. We've already added, so VBA takes care of this. So now we're using the ver we've set the variable to equal another piece of memory. And we set first name as Blossom, Benton, Australia, and the total items 88. And now we add that to our collection. And if you open this, you can see they're both in the collection. So the next time we create another, we'll run it on again. We create another customer object, and this time it's reset. And again, we fill it up and then we add it to the collection. And you can see that it's added to the collection. So this is basically how we work with a collection. Now let's get rid of this breakpoint, run it on, and it's got everything. Now what you might want to do after this, of course, is that you might want to write everything out. And how we do that is just really the same way that we, we use collections. We basically just put a loop to our collection. So we say for i equals 1 to collection dot count and next i of course. And let's say we want to write it out to h1 and, and in those those different cells. So we would say for each for i equals 1 to call and we'd say whatever's at call i we want and then so let's get the value here so let's create a second one let's do dim customer out we'll call it as the customer and we simply say set customer out equals to whatever's in in the current collection we could do this as a for each loop as well and then when we have it at this point we can basically just say customer out and we can say first name and we can just write that to the sheet we can just say sheet dot cells and it's going to be h and we're going to write it out <coughs> based on the current variable which is i so we're going to write out that row and we say value equals and imagine we just want the first name and the count because we have all the data we can decide what we want to use so we could just say in i we want to just put out the total items so we don't want everything for this particular report and we can just write them out like this and then we run the code and you can see it wrote everything out so this is basically a very simple way of reading all the data that we want. We, we basically just put it into a class module and then when it's in a class module, we can access it very easy. So that's basically how we use class modules and objects with the collection. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to get notifications of more videos, then click on the subscribe button and you'll get notified whenever I have a new video coming out, which is generally about once or twice a week. And also, if you've got any questions on this video, feel free to add your question in the comment and I will answer it.